Today's rum tasting, I am revisiting Santa Teresa 1796. Uh, and I say revisiting because uh, when, I bought the, when I bought the bottle, and it's a rum that I'd had ages ago, but when I bought it, when I niched down into this channel to do all this sort of stuff, it was a rum that I tasted and I just wasn't taken aback by it at all. Um, and since revisiting it a few times, I still hold that same opinion of it, uh, to be honest. Uh, but before I get into my sort of tasting notes and um, kind of aroma, what I smell and what I think, uh, let's just give you the bit of background behind it all, or the facts and figures about this. As I say, 1796, it is a Solera aged rum. And don't think of Solera aged as bad in any shape or form. It just hasn't got an age statement. I've seen it loosely banded around 35 years. It's absolute rubbish. Solera cannot give you an age statement because it just moves from barrel to barrel. Uh, that's all it is. So there's no definitive age statement on it. Uh, I am led to believe that this is lightly dosed. There's a, lot, a small amount of sugar on there. And... And to be honest, I can taste a little bit of sugar on there, but not too much. I don't think it's as heavily dosed as what plantation would be, for example. And plantations can be 16, 15, 14 grams, up to 20 grams of sugar per litre, some of them. And I really do enjoy some of those. Um, I don't think this is anywhere close to that. So I think it's got a touch of sugar in it, but not too much. Um, Price-wise for this, we have broken the £50 barrier just ever so slightly. It wasn't when I first bought it. It is now. And I do check all these mar on Master of Malt. So that's my go-to guys in the UK. It's £52 at the moment on Master of Malt. It was slightly under when I bought it about six months ago. I'm talking like £46, something like that. Um, so 40% ABV, Solera aged. I don't think I've got anything else to tell you. Um, column still. So the one thing I want to do um, from now going forward is if I can is sort of step away from that inherent English, Spanish, French style of rum. Because what is becoming more and more apparent, even, even on some of the older rums, but it, especially on the new breed of rums that are coming through, there is just no generic style. It, people just make rum in their own style. So you cannot compare one rum to another rum. And perhaps we shouldn't have been doing that anyway. But when you are educating, it is a lot easier to start talking out about Spanish, English, French styles of rum, that inherent sort of thing. So for this, um, Venezuelan would naturally be a Spanish style of rum uh, because of that inherent column kind of still thing. Now, I say with this rum... I mean, first off, on the nose, the nose actually smells really, really inviting. The nose smells right up my street. I get, I get the vanilla, I get the woody, oaky nose. I kind of get apricot, which is kind of this weird thing that I get off uh, column. And I know a lot of people do. I get it a lot off column still rums, especially Cuban or Puerto Rican or, or Dominican Republic sort of rums. I get that sort of that apricot bite to the nose. I do... I mean, the vanilla is just up front. It is just bags and bags of vanilla on the nose. Um, the woody oak, as I said, the dried fruits. But I kind of get like a toffee caramel sort of bite to it. And, and none of this really distinguishes it from a lot of other molasses-based rums. It's very inherent, very similar sort of nose styles is what you get. But any sweetness that is coming off the nose, I... I don't want to classify that as caramel or toffee or anything like that. The, the sweetness I get off the nose is more honey vibed, if you know what I mean. It's kind of, it's got this, and I love honey, and that's kind of what I can really relate to honey because I do have a lot of honey. Uh, so I can really relate it to that. I think it's more honey than it is um, than it is caramel or anything like that. But I just, I just sort of get this little... Little nod to barrel aging, but it is vanilla. It does loosely remind me, and I only know this because I've smelt it in the last sort of month or so and I haven't had it for years. It does loosely remind me of Sailor Jerry in that sort of sense. That sort of, not vanilla and lime, but that sort of vanilla y kind of vibe that Sailor Jerry has. But on the, so on the nose, I'm quite taken aback by it. I'm like, oh, this is going to be lovely. Now, when we get to the taste, it's the it's the taste, which is probably the crucial thing, that sort of lets me down a little bit. It's a very, to me, it's a very bitter, unbalanced, barrel aged, I wouldn't say smoky, more kind of tobacco, um, tobacco vibes coming off that. 
it's like it's not the finished article. It's not a rounded run for me. And I know this is just my opinion. I just, I don't want to do reviews. I want to do tasting notes. I kind of want to make it relatable so you can kind of understand because I know full well this is up a lot of people's streets. It is a very, very popular run. It's just not a run that I go back to time and time again. It's not a run that I automatically grab from behind the bar uh, and think, oh, I fancy one of those tonight. It, for me, 100% isn't what I would call, and to coin Ian Burrell's term, the session run. I really love that term because I don't want a second one of these. I find it too much hard work. Bearing in mind, it's still only 40% now. I find it too much hard work to have a second uh, glass of this when I'm sipping neat. I dare say old fashions uh, and those kind of drinks, I dare say it's going to be a lot better. But for me, I have got a lot more friendlier a lot more rums in my style that i prefer to drink neat than i would do this especially at the price for i mean 52 pounds uh, for your for your prices these days i've got rums here um that are kind of in the 30s that i would go back to time and time again that cross both um, sort of gaps here neat sipping and kind of like not a cocktail rum as such 50 pounds is a lot to be spending on a cocktail rum but um you know, I'm talking about the old fashions. I'm maybe talking about those sort of more classic styles of rum or cocktails that don't get lost in tiki or or too much juice or too much syrups. And now on another taste, it's like the there is a, this little bit of dry spice on it. I I potentially say cinnamon. I think it's definitely I don't get nutmeg or anything like that. I kind of want cinnamon, and it's it's that sort of spice lay like that cinnamon. It just sits on top of the barrel. Um, I'm assuming I, I, I'm assuming it's oak. I don't know what barrels they use in in their Solera system there, but it's just not rounded. It just needs something else for me brought to the party. And I dare say that's probably an unpopular opinion, but I, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to build up uh, for you guys at home. I'm trying to build up the rums that I can kind of guide you round so you understand my palette so you can use that as a reference point as to whether you would like it or not the one thing i will say for this i if i was blind tasting i potentially wouldn't put that at 40 percent abv i've uh, most of my session rums are 40 percent abv but it's, it's even that in itself is quite a bizarre one because i've got what i would call session rums at 47 at 52 53 percent abv and they're just and I'm not even talking dosage or anything like that. They're just more user friendly to me. This, for me, tastes like um, a kind of a spicy, more alcoholic. I'd potentially even go roughly about the 45, 46, 46 percent margin for this because. But I, I, I can now that I know the ABV, I can relate that to the wood, to the barrel aging that's gone on in this. And just having a, a few more sips and just letting it sit. Uh, different stages around my palate before swallowing. I do, I do get nods of toffee coming out there. I do get, um, I wouldn't say the apricot that I get on the nose. I, I just don't get at all on the palate. I don't get any pineapple or anything like that. But I do get a little whiff of kind of like the sultanas, those sort of dried mixed fruits, if you like, not the tropical dried fruits in, in especially if you're in the UK. I don't know. I'm assuming we get this in the US and around the world as well. But when we say sort of dried fruits, mixed fruits, it's like raisins and currants and that sort of stuff. But we do occasionally, and cherries, we do occasionally get sort of like pineapple, papaya and all that as well as dried fruit. So I kind of want to distinguish that. It's more the raisin sultanas than it is the sort of pineapple, uh, coconut sort of vibe on this. So sweetness scale. Um, I, this is a, this is a weird one for me because it's, it has got a little bit of sweetness, but it's not enough to mask that rough around the edges kind of taste for me. Um, it's even a little bit of chocolate, a bit of cacao coming out now as well. Um, it's not enough to mask that. So I, I potentially would go a four uh, out of 10 on the sweetness scale, 10 being very, very sweet. And this is not related to spiced rum. This is related to rum. For example, um, I would put Diplo, Diplomatico, obviously at, you know, your nines, your tens. That is potentially one of the sweetest rums out there. Uh, Plantation XO, um, again, I would put sort of a seven, maybe a seven or an eight. 
out of 10 on, on the rum scale. When we're adding spiced rums into that, you know, we would either go up to 20 or your Plantation XO would be down at a four and your bamboos and your crackings and all that would be eights and nines out of 10. So that's kind of the sweetness scale that I'm getting at. So for me, is this a restock? Uh, do I lose faith in the brand? No, because I, I haven't got it. But the Santa Clara, the, you won't be able to see it on there. The sort of the, the, the white, the unaged, whatever you want to call it. I really do love the Santa Clara. Absolutely do love that. So uh, Santa Teresa, I I really do, I really do rate. I, it's Clara. I don't know whether I just said Santa Clara or whatever I call it. The Clara, the white, the unaged. Anyway. So I do kind of like this. I'm just not a huge, huge fan of this. It lacks something. And I, I'm not kind of sure what that is. It's... Um, it's just, I don't see it as the finished article. I don't see it as a session rum. I wouldn't buy it as a, a mixing rum because it'd be too expensive. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of in no man's land for me. I'm glad I've got it. I'm glad it's kind of there at a stage where I could kind of potentially be a go-between, be, between like Bacardi 10, for instance, and uh, some of the more kind of more distinguished column still rums because I would put that in there. I potentially enjoy Bacardi 8, Bacardi 10 more, uh, even the Florida Khan is more. That's sort of my level, what I kind of enjoy. So this probably would be, a f like proper out and out rum fans, geeks uh, would probably be more on this level. But I think at the 50 pound level, where our template is rums up to 50 pound, I die what better for me personally but you let me know what you think in the comments below what tasting notes have you got uh, help the rest of the community out if you've picked something out that i don't pick out in this rum just drop them in the comments below let me know uh, what you think of this give it a score out of 10 give it a sweetness score out of 10 uh, and let me know whether you restock it because all your comments i'm just one person i just want to build the community where someone could come into this video uh, look at the comments and, and decide for themselves whether they want to buy it or not for me it's not a restock but i'm pretty much guaranteeing for a lot of you it will be